If you were to ask me a year ago where my eBay business plan was heading, it would be completely different than if you asked me today. One year ago, I was preparing to get my store up to 8,000 items and list 50 a day and sell 50 per day exclusively on eBay. I got to 3,000 items three months ago with a full draft bank of about 245 items. Today, I have a store, an eBay store of 2,150 items. I've come down a lot and my draft bank has just over 100 items. I have cleaned out, and I've been listing about 17 or 18 items every single day since then. What's happening right now is I'm listing between 15 and 18 items every day, but I'm selling between 20 and 28 items across eBay and Poshmark. I'll get to that a little bit later. I'm currently listing, we'll say on average 16 per day, because sometimes it's only 15, Sometimes it's 18, it just kind of depends on what I'm feeling in the morning. I'm listing, between, I'm listing 16 items a day and I am selling on eBay and Poshmark about 24 items every single day. That's the average, it's 24 a day. So I am shrinking at a rate of eight items a day every single day and my store has been pared down significantly to 2,150 items. I am planning on aggressively, not aggressively, I am planning on just continuing this path and getting down to a shop of about 1,500 items and then trying to maintain that. But where I am currently living, I don't think I'll be able to maintain that because of my business plan. I don't think that I'll be able to find enough items in my area every single day to maintain a 1,500 item eBay shop. There are three major pillars contributing to the very quick sells. The first, talk about it on my channel all the time, so I'll just briefly blast past that one because you guys are probably getting sick of hearing about it. Sell-through rate. I only focus on items that have an 80% sell-through rate or faster. Second, I'm cross-posting, cross-listing. If you would have asked me a year ago, hey, should I cross-list? I would have said no. I would have said, Focus on eBay, get really good on eBay. Once you scale your eBay business and you feel like you're in a good space, you can start cross-listing to other platforms once your systems are up to scale and established and in place. Less than 4% of businesses make it to scale. So most people I would not have recommended to cross-list at all a year ago. Today, I've completely changed my mindset. I believe that cross-listing is one of the best things you can do to improve your income and your life here reselling. Various changes in the reselling world have happened, have, have made this come to fruition. eBay doesn't advertise as much on Google anymore. These smaller platforms are. I believe right now is an awesome opportunity to capture some of these smaller platforms such as Mercari and Poshmark and Depop and Bonanza and all that stuff. They're, they're using Google ads and it's working. So I think that cross-listing is a major key when it comes to selling clothing, to selling every single item very rapidly on the internet. And then the third pillar is focusing on what matters in each individual listing. Too many of us are caught up in the algorithm. What does the algorithm want? We need to focus on what the customer wants. And what the customer wants is a quality listing. They want enough photos to understand the quality and condition of the item and to understand exactly what it is and what it looks like. They want a title in the way that they would type it in. So I'm really focused on the first five or six words of my titles. I model them exactly how customers, the majority of customers would type that in. eBay has a lot of literature on that if you just Google it. There's a lot of other quality accounts here on YouTube that talk about title structure and things like that as well. I also have a video or two on it. Focus on sell through rate, cross listing in a strategic way, and doing the meat and potatoes of listings, the uh, title, the, the item specifics, and the pictures. So I have 2,150 items on eBay, and I had a Poshmark closet of 1,300 items, all clothing items and clothing accessories, no electronics or anything like that. That has come down to 850 items. I listed, I cross-listed 17 items on Mercari and immediately got two sales that first day, just 17. <laughs> okay, that was it. So I shut that off because I am 
getting a surgery on January 24th. So I'm gonna be down. Um, I am working more than I ever have these last couple of weeks in preparation for that. Um, I have a huge draft bank for content that I've been focusing on a lot. And then also just getting everything in order for the business. If I cross-listed everything over to Mercari while I was down, my employees would be overwhelmed. So I'm not gonna do that to them. And I don't want things to, I don't want them adjusting to a new platform while I'm down either. So I'm waiting until that surgery. Once I have healed in five to 20 days, it's a hernia surgery, however long that takes, I will then be cross-listing to Mercari and I will be trying to maintain 1,500 items in my store, but with selling so many items on eBay and Poshmark already and then adding Mercari, I don't know if I'll be able to maintain that here in my town of St. George, Utah, but my wife and I will be moving into Northern Utah sometime next year. And one of the main reasons is because of that. Once we move to St. George, I mean, once we move to Northern Utah, I don't know what the business is going to be. Um, I plan on the thing, the two things that make me the most money is sourcing, finding good items and then recording myself doing it and making content here on YouTube and TikTok. So what I plan on doing is spending right now, I source one to two hours a day when I'm in Northern Utah, there's so many more thrift stores, so many more flea markets, so many more garage sales, so many more places like NPS and like liquidation places that I'm going to be sourcing five to six hours a day and making content all along the way. And then having, and then I'll just choose. I'll choose how much money I want to make on eBay. I'll choose how many items we want to have in the store and how many we want to sell per day. I may elect to bring on two, three, four full-time employees and sell 40, 60, 80, 100 items per day. What will most likely happen though is we will sell about the plan right now is when we move up there, my wife is going to be a full-time partner in the business. I'm uh, pretty excited for that. And she's going to be doing all of the cleaning and shipping and prepping and all that stuff while I'm outsourcing and making content. And I believe just the two of us can handle 30 items a day. And with how amazing the sourcing is in Northern Utah, I'm more than... I. I know that I can find 30 plus items in five or six hours every single day. So that's the plan for now. We may bring on an additional employee to double that. And then we may bring on another employee to double that as well. I'll keep you guys updated on that. Another thing that I will be doing is utilizing whatnot. Just did a whatnot last night. And I think we sold um, like 40 articles of clothing in about 45 minutes. It was awesome. I'm usually able to get between 70 and 80% of eBay comps on whatnot. Part of that is because I do have a TikTok and YouTube following that I have worked hard to build. But people ask me all the time, if uh, if you can make money on whatnot without an influence, without a following. And my first two shows, I actually did that. I went kind of like incognito mode. A few followers actually did find me. But I didn't tell anyone I was doing any auctions. I did two quick ones. My average viewership was eight. Now I'm getting about, now my shows usually have just under 100 people live in it, but I was only having seven to 11 people in my auctions at any getting time, any given time. And I was still getting about 50 to 60% of eBay comps, which on a live auction in 15 seconds, it's actually really amazing. So another thing that I'll be utilizing is whatnot. Um, I'm, I'm using Poshmark and whatnot to aggressively get rid of clothing. Um, clothing, I, if it's profitable, I'm letting it fly. So I'm not too focused on maximizing profit on clothing. I am focused on, on maximizing profit on all of my other items, but I want to get, if I have an eBay, if I have 1500 items in my resale business, I want way less than a third to be clothing. I want like two or 300 clothing items that I'd again have between an 80 and 150% sell through rate. Uh, that's what I'll be shooting for there. So I'm not the best clothing reseller. Um, I mean, I do, I do great, but I want, I, I don't enjoy listing or selling clothing. Um, so I'm going to be paring that down. I, I enjoy it, but I just, I just make so much more money selling cameras and remotes guys. Um, and DVD, VCR combo players and things like that. So that's my business plan right now. Um, and with, with these platforms, with these three platforms, plus whatnot in my pocket, back pocket, 
I think I can have a 200% sell through rate store. I think that I can have 1500 listed and sell 30 a day every single day. I think honestly, like, and with the amount of sourcing I'm going to be able to do in Northern Utah and right now with heading to Vegas and heading to Northern Utah on periodic trips and the amazing thrift store that I have in town, I'm still able to pick up on average 15 a day. Um, so my store is shrinking, De most definitely shrinking. So I'll keep you guys updated on things as they transpire, but uh, I'm really excited with how reselling is going. And again, I'm not here to um, call anyone out. You know, I'm just here to look at the landscape of reselling and give my opinions on it and share my experiences. If you focus on sell-through rate, you will never complain about reselling. You won't. You really won't. Okay. You may complain that you're not finding enough items. That's a good problem. It's a way better problem than having hundreds of items and thousands of items that don't sell. That's a bad problem. That's the worst problem to have. You have time taken away to source them. You have the cost of storing them. You have the cost already sunk into them from purchasing them. You have the listing fees that you're paying. You, oh man, that's a much worse problem to have. I would rather say, man, I can only find four really fast profitable items every day shopping for hours. I would much rather have that problem than have, man, I have thousands and thousands of listings and I'm selling one or two or three a day. Much worse problem in my opinion. I am focusing on fast sell through rate items. I am going to be cross listing to multiple platforms and I will be focusing on taking my time on each item to make sure it is listed properly. Doing those three things, I don't, I, I, the, the biggest stress will be just getting the shipments out on time. So I left this part of the video towards the end because I know there's a lot of people that uh, get pretty upset about what I'm about to talk about. I think in March will be the first time ever that I make more money through content than I do through reselling. Part of my business plan is to focus more on content. Like I said, the two best ways for me to make money is sourcing and recording myself sourcing and recording myself talking about selling, right? So I'm going to be focusing a lot more time on TikTok and YouTube and then allocating listing, shipping, cleaning, prepping, all of that stuff to employees um, and it's going to going to result in making me a ton more money. I don't plan on shilling out a ton of services. Um, as you guys can see in this video, I talked about cross-listing. I didn't tell you to use any platform. Sorry, my dryer went off and it was extremely loud. All of the cross-listing platforms have reached out to me to work with them, but uh, I've turned them all down because I just have a different business model. Um, I'm not going to be doing a ton of affiliate marketing. I will be doing some, but not, not very many at all. I want to just give you guys the best information possible. And when people throw money at you, you know, sometimes you just start marketing something because it makes you an extra $2,000 that month, even though there's a better option out there for other people. So my recommendation is to do your research on Vendu or list perfectly or flip or just doing things manually, decide what's best for you and your business but I definitely think cross-listing is going to be a huge factor. Now, this is where this is still relatable because a lot of you guys don't have content and you never will. I recommend doing a little bit of content though. It helps ease some of the burden of just doing the same listing over and over and over again, shipping all that stuff. It kind of it kind of helps your mental health a little bit um, if you can stay small. As you grow larger, there's a lot more hate and comments that can actually affect your psyche in a negative way. But that doesn't affect me, so that's why I feel like I'm pretty good at it. Anyway, I'm rambling. You can, I still, this is what I recommend doing, is getting your reselling business as big as it can to where you're cash flowing, and then hiring employees and focusing on sourcing. If you can master sourcing, I talk about this on my channel a lot, sourcing is key. If you can buy low, and you can learn how to find the items in your area, that sell the quickest and for the best margin. And if you can keep finding them over and over and over and over and over again, that's how you make money. You cannot make money without having profitable inventory and you can make way more money if you can find it more often. So if you are only sourcing one hour a day or five hours a week or eight hours a week, if you want to increase your revenue, 
you need to increase your sourcing time. And a lo and for most people right now, that isn't an option, okay? Slow growth in the military, smooth is, smooth is fast. No, it's, uh, I, can't, I can't remember the saying. I really like it though. I've used it a lot on my channel, but I'm, I'm pulling a blank. But it's important to grow slow and to just keep going, keep going smoothly because smooth is fast. You will eventually get to a point where you can hire out. Don't sprint to that. Don't break things on your way. Just keep keep doing what you're doing. And then as soon as possible, get someone to do shipping for you so you can free up another 90 minutes a day to go sourcing. As soon as it's as soon as that's as soon as it's available again, train that person to do listings so that you can get another hour to 90 minutes to go sourcing again. The best way to make moves in this business is to source more, but you have to do it correctly. Again, I talk about this all the time. You don't want the 4,000 item shop that sells one to two a day. You want the 1,500 item shop that sells 30 plus per day. Focus on sell-through rate, focus on in-demand items, spend more time sourcing and you will make the most money possible in this eBay reselling Poshmark, Mercari, Depop, whatnot, all that good stuff. Also, if you've made it to this point in the video, if you haven't yet, I made a second channel called j Picks, P-I-C-K-S. P -I -C -K -S. It's where I just go sourcing a lot and I do go to yard sales and thrift stores with a GoPro or sometimes just with my phone and I show you guys live sourcing. So if you guys are interested in that content and you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and subscribe to J-Ride Picks. I'm really excited about that channel and I'm hoping that it's going to be entertaining and very educational at the same time. Thanks for everything you guys do for me. I'll never forget. I'll never forget where you guys have put me. So thank you.